It's Maj, and I am so excited to be chatting with Miss Crystal Curry here today, uh, who is a licensed therapist and emotional wellness specialist. Hello, Miss Crystal. Hi. How are you? Good, good. How are you this evening? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so I am super excited to just jump right in um, and chat all about your journey and, and kind of how you made it to where you are and what you're passionate about and all those good things. So we're just going to hop right into it. Um, so, so let's learn, I'd, I'd love to learn a little bit about your story. So let's talk about kind of what sparked your interest in that mental health space, that emotional wellness space. What, what happened there? What sparked your interest? So my journey has been very interesting. It's very personal. Um, I've always been a helper just by nature. Um, and so I knew I always wanted to help people. Um, but I grew up in a very toxic home environment, right? Um, my dad wasn't there. Well, first my mom and my dad had me when they were 14 and 15, right? So I grew up with them. Um, but my dad really wasn't around um, because my mom kind of used him as like a pawn, me as like a pawn, you know? So it's like, if you won't do right, then you won't see your daughter. It was just kind of that like back and forth, you know? But because my mom was so young when she had me, she was pretty much emotionally immature, you know, so I did not get a lot of those emotional needs met. And she made a lot of, you know, difficult romantic relationship choices that kind of really backfired. And so that created a lot of traumatic experiences for me. And so I always knew that we didn't have the best relationship. But when I became an adult, um, our relationship just pretty much went to smithereens, right? And I was faced with the fact that I did not have a very healthy relationship with my mom, right? And so I was trying to find places and people to talk to about my situation. And in the Black community, I found out in that moment that you can talk about dads, right? And how they are absent and how they don't do right. But don't you dare talk about a Black mom ever. Like they are protected, you know? And so I felt very shunned and like I did not have a safe space to talk about my experience. And so I became a therapist and I vowed that I would create safe spaces for people for whatever issues that they were dealing with. But 95% of the people that I work with have, are adults who have unhealthy relationships with their parents and they're very toxic and they've had some childhood experiences that they've carried into their adulthood that they need to heal from. And so that is how I came into the profession and how I kind of created my own niche um, because there are people who fathers weren't there, but they were also left with toxic mothers and that they need a place like I did to heal and discuss that without judgment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I absolutely mm -hmm. love that kind of using your own experience to help others who may be dealing with sort of the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you're so right about, you know, don't you dare talk about Black mamas. Ever. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> right, right. But, you know, I think in the, I, I, I'm not a mental health expert, but I think mm -hmm. that is some, there's something to be said about that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, when we think of the Black community and, and, and addressing that there may not be healthy relationships with their moms, you know, like, don't get me wrong. You know, I'm here for black women all day, every yeah. day, yeah, you yeah. know, but, yeah. but we do have to address kind of that elephant in the room. So I, it's so important that you said that. Um, and, and you mentioned, you know, you work with a lot of uh, people who have, you know, trauma, mm -hmm. um, unhealthy relationships, maybe mm -hmm. with their parents or just with family mm -hmm. members. And with that, you've worked in a myriad of, of therapeutic settings. I was reading yeah. through your bio and I saw that you worked in a substance abuse center, a, mm -hmm. a, a sex offender center, um, a yeah. juvenile detention center. Yeah. Tell me about those experiences. What What is that? First of all, how did you get there? <laughs> tell me how did you get there? And then, and then tell me about some of those experiences. Yeah, you know, I, as human beings, we always gravitate to what's familiar, right? So dealing with people in those type of environments, like the juvenile detention centers and the psychiatric centers and all of those, like, I'm, I'm not unfamiliar to that and the chaos that it brings. Um, so actually, I was comfortable there and I still am. So my first job out of college was a juvenile detention center. And I did that for four years and I loved it. And then I went to the sex offender program and the substance abuse program and the psychiatric center. And then I worked with families um, who children were about to be 
removed by DSS, you know. Um, and through that, I was really able to see how generational trauma is passed down, right? Because you have eight-year-olds who are dealing with very adult issues, and then you work with their parents because children live in a vacuum. They, you know, you can heal them, but once they go back into the environment, the same thing happens. And so you work with the parents and then you realize that the children are the way they are because the parents are the way that they are, you know? And it's not enough for us as adults to just, you know, decide we don't want to deal with it because I realized even as my own, even, even as me being a parent that I can't parent past my own healthiness and self-awareness right? And all of those things were passed down in all of the environments that I worked in. So when I became a mental health professional, I really focused on adults because of the, a lot of the adults that I work with are parents or they desire to be parents. And so just like you can pass generational wealth to your kids, you can pass generational healing or generational dysfunction. It is completely up to us. And we have a lot of blind spots that we're not aware of. And so it's really important for me to work with the adult so that we can get all of that situated so they don't pass it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That's so important. So, so you work with adults and children or is there like a majority kind of yeah. target audience that you work with or. Yeah. So I really just work with adults, but it's very interesting because they are adults who are wounded and have wounded inner child. So it's essentially dealing with an, a, a child who's in an adult body that is attempting to recreate relationships from their childhood to get some unneed, unmet needs met. So yeah, so it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and you kind of touched on this a little bit, but what would you say is, is sort of your specialty, right? So you've talked mm -hmm. about kind of that childhood trauma, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. those, those unhealthy family relationships. Mm -hmm. those adults who are trying to recreate that life that they didn't have so what would you say is is your specialty and, and what kind of drew you to that would you say it's I know you mentioned it kind of just being familiar like I just mm -hmm. it just felt right so yeah. what, what would you say is your specialty and what kind of drew you to that yeah so my specialty is adults who have unresolved traumatic experiences that derive from unhealthy relationships from their parents right so it is adults who have been in relationships with their parents and the relationship itself has been traumatic whether the parent was emotionally neglectful physical abuse because in the black community we don't recognize a lot that we were physically abused and I have a lot of people that I work with where I have to say no that was abuse you know and so they're dealing with that um and those who just have did not feel like they were picked by their parents or that they were good enough for their parents because a lot of us in the black community are overachievers for many reasons right but a lot of us are overachievers because we realized and it was reinforced that who we are authentically is not enough so we have to obtain and achieve so many things in order to become valuable and that is where our identity is attached to until you get to this point where it's like okay I don't like any of this and I don't know who I am. And that's really what draws people to therapy. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think that's so important. And I, I started my, my therapy journey this year. Oh, and um, yes, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. And, and when, when I first kind of jumped into, you know, some of my issues or the things that, you know, I wanted to discuss, we jumped right into my childhood. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what is your relationship mm -hmm. like with your parents? You know, mm -hmm. what, what are some things you experienced? And so you, you kind of talked about, um, you know, sometimes we don't know that, you know, we've been traumatized by abuse mm -hmm. or something like that because we didn't know it was abuse. Right. right. So right. it's so, so important, you know, you know, that you mentioned that, especially in the black community, it's mm -hmm. now you're, you're carrying this generational trauma that you didn't even know was generational trauma. <laughs> you know, yeah. you didn't even know it, it was abuse. Um, what would you say is, is or should I say, are some of the, the challenges or the issues that you kind of deal with um, in your your day to day? Yeah, so it's really hard for me because I'm still a person, right? I'm a therapist, but I'm still a person, you know. Um, it's really difficult, even in my profession, to see people who are just suffering, uh, suffering for things that were not their fault because I've been there and I connect with that, you know. And when you have these traumatic experiences or these mental health symptoms that come from 
your parents and what they did not do. And you're kind of left with this mess to figure out. And it was never really yours to figure out in the first place. And it's like, gosh, why am I suffering? Like, why did this happen to me? Like that is, that has always been difficult for me because I resonate with that so much. Um, so even as a therapist, I still struggle with that when people are just like in that initial phase when they're just like, I just don't understand why I'm suffering. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, you know, we always say, you know, the therapist has to have a therapist too, right? Like therapists need therapy. So when we think of, you know, self-care and, and prioritizing yourself mm -hmm. and, and not getting caught up in those stories because mm -hmm. you can't relate what does that look like for you? What does self-care look like for you? How do you separate, you know, kind of that work from personal, even though work is kind of personal? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I do have a therapist. Uh, I have a therapist that I see. Um, she is absolutely amazing. I'm pretty sure everybody thinks that about their therapist, you know, but my therapist is absolutely amazing. And then I have people in my life who are safe for me, you know, where I can be exactly who I am if I am in shambles if I need encouragement if I just need some reinforcement like I can go to them and they know exactly what I need and they've done life with me like I've been walking with them for like 10 years and so they know like if I'm distant or they haven't heard from me in a while they'll check up hey what's going on you need to come you need me to come you know and I have those people in my life and then I have my husband who's absolutely amazing um and my kids and they don't care about this therapy stuff you know they just want me and that keeps me grounded um and so I really appreciate all the people who are strategically placed in my life because it does take a team I say to make me go and to keep me healthy and sane mm -hmm. yeah I love that go hubby all right now <laughs> <laughs> so I know that July is 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 minority mental health awareness month mm -hmm. um and, and I have a couple of questions around that my my best friend, she's in 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 the whole therapy, get a degree in therapy and oh. stuff. Like, so sometimes she's my best friend. I'm like, okay, I need you to be my therapist today. <laughs> um, but one thing that we discussed, I think, when I think of minorities or when I think of Black people, the Black community, and and when it comes to therapy. So once you kind of get into that place where you're like, okay, I want to go to therapy. I want to try this out. I found I found this therapist. Now I don't know what to expect. So you go into therapy and you're like, what do I do? What do I say? Should I tell her about the argument that I had with my boyfriend yesterday? Should I tell her that I didn't eat? Like, you don't know what to expect or you kind of don't know what to do kind of going into therapy. Yeah. So how do you learn about that? How do you, I guess, prepare? what is the how to for therapy when you have you know, the black community and, and my parents, there was no such thing as mental health in my oh, absolutely. Love my, right. love my mom and daddy to death, but right. that ain't nothing wrong with you. You don't pay no bills. Okay. I pay all the bills. Right. What you got to worry about? What, what you're sad you about? No, ain't no mental, ain't nothing wrong with you. The only thing you need to worry about is getting an A's on your report card. Right. Um, right. And so now that, you know, I've, I'm, I'm in this place where, okay, I've grown, mm -hmm. I'm trying out therapy. Mm -hmm. And for people who are like me, we're going into therapy. It's like, how the heck do you do? How, how the heck do you do this? Yeah. So what, what would you say to those people? What, what is, what is that, that kind of yes. research or preparation going mm -hmm. into therapy when you've never done it before? Yeah, I identify that with that too, because I feel like there's a certain level of anxiety when you try to find a therapist anyway, right? And my first therapist, like after the second session, she didn't show up anymore, you know? And I was like, oh my gosh. And, but that's like the worst fear, you know? It's like, what if I am too much, you know? So I would always say, you know, like do your research, like ask people, you know, if you know somebody's going to therapy, like ask them about their therapist or if their therapist can recommend a therapist, you know? And then I always say, it's so cool to get a therapist that looks like you, you know, that you can identify with, that you don't have to um, feel like you have to modify what you say or watch what you say because therapy is your safe place, you know? And so if you want to cuss, if you want to yell, if you want to use your jargon, if you want to come with your hair conditioned or wrapped, do that, you know? Um, because ultimately you pay the therapist, like the therapist works for you, you know? And so once you've done all that and you find a therapist, be honest with your therapist, you know, be like, you know, do you want a therapist that comes planned with things to do? Or do you want a therapist that you're able to come and say, well, this is what I want to talk about today. Mm -hmm. This is what bothers me today. Because I always tell the clients that I'm working with, yeah, I know what you want to work with, but life still happens while you're trying to heal. So if life is lifing, 
let's talk about life and then we can get back to the rest of it. Because I think it's really important that you keep in communication with your therapist because we're not mind readers. You know, we're very good at the brain and how it functions, but we can't read your mind. So if we're doing something also that you don't like or that you enjoy that's not working for you, let us know. Because it may be something that we're not capable of doing and we need to refer you to someone else or we just need to change our approach. Um, but being honest and open with your therapist is always beneficial. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I love that. And, and I wanted to ask, what is some advice that you have for, I guess, finding a therapist, right? So we talked mm -hmm. about kind of talking to some of your friends, you know, mm -hmm. um, maybe about their, their personal therapy experience, mm -hmm. you know, always looking for somebody who looks like you so that you can't come to therapy with your bonnet on and not feel judged. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, but I, I will say, I think from, from my personal experience, when I, when I started therapy, this was my first time I didn't know what to expect. And I actually switched my first therapist because I, we, we weren't we yeah. were connecting, but you know, when you think of, of people who are already, who already have anxiety about going into therapy, mm -hmm. right? This is a mm -hmm. scary new environment. And then I don't care for my first therapist. Most people are like, this isn't for me, right? Well, this isn't for me. So what, and, and so I, I guess my question is, what are some ways to, I guess, make that checklist for what you want your therapist to be. Uh -huh. um, and then if it doesn't work out, how do you move forward from that? Yeah. So I would say for a profession, for a checklist, like think about what you would want if you could take your really good friend that you can talk to about anything and turn them into a therapist. Like, what would that look like for you? You know, physically, what would you need to hear? You know, how would they need to act like that kind of that kind of thing. Um, but then there are some great databases. You know, I know like Therapy for Black Girls on Instagram, they have an amazing database. Psychology Today has a great database. Um, there are also databases where you can just Google and you can find a video of a therapist talking about themselves. Um, and there are a lot of therapists who have personal pages now because we're going into the age where therapists um, aren't just therapists, but they allow you into their personal life as well. And so you get an opportunity to see what the therapist is like personally, because that was important to me that she had the same values and beliefs that I did. Um, and so Instagram is a great tool if you use um, like the hashtags and, you know, find a therapist in your area, because I don't think people realize that because of COVID, you can now see a therapist virtually anywhere in your state, you know, so they don't have to be exactly where you live. They can just be in your state or you can find a therapist that's outside of your state, but is licensed to operate in your state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All good points. All good mm -hmm. points. Um, now, when we, when we going back to Minority Mental Health Awareness yeah. Month, why is it important for I I, I know we is minority, but I'm gonna say black people. Why why is it important? Okay. <laughs> why is it important for black people to seek mental health treatment? Why is that important for us? Yeah, because our life is hard, you know, like just being blanket, you know, our life is really, really hard. And we have so many struggles, you know, and so many obstacles that are forced on us and then that we force on ourselves that we really just need a safe place, you know, to be where you don't have to be on, you don't have to be a mom, an employee, a business person, a sister, a wife, a husband, you don't have to be any of that. But the focus for an hour is completely on you you and whatever you want to talk about, you know. Um, and then we have so much that we feel like we have to keep inside and these standards that we have to uphold and the pressure is so much that we're going to literally bust if we don't, you know. There are so many Black women and Black men who are leaving their families, leaving what they've known because they're just tired, you know. Life wears you down and you just get tired and you just need a place where you can just be you and become, you know, filled because, you know, I heard a great quote and it's like, you know, we talk about you can't pour from an empty cup, you know, but whatever's in the cup belongs to you and the overflow is for everybody else you know, but sometimes we just try to pour from the cup that's really supposed to be ours. And then we're wondering like, well, why is nobody tending to my needs or why don't I have what I need, you know? And so it's so important just to give yourself that opportunity to reflect and to let out and just be who you need to be and say what you need to say without judgment, you know, and nobody else will know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good points, good points. Um, it was something that you said that triggered um, something that I wanted to ask you. Um, oh, so for, 
someone who is thinking about therapy, they're right on the edge, but they're mm-hmm. scared, right? That anxiety yeah. kicks in, that fear yeah. kicks in. Mm-hmm. And, and it's like, mm, maybe this isn't for me. What advice do you have yeah. for that person? Yeah. So anxiety is very interesting because it's absolutely necessary, but anxiety is designed to keep you safe, right? And so although uh, we know that we need to get better, the way that our brain works is it enjoys what is familiar, even though it's unhealthy, you know? And so I would definitely tell you to experience the feelings of anxiety, but push through them anyway, and just go to therapy, make the appointment and see what happens. Because if nothing changes, nothing changes, right? And you know you need to go to therapy and that's why you're having the internal struggle. And the internal struggle is never going to go away, right? It's just going to come out in different parts of your life. So just go ahead and do it. And then once you do it and once you get your feet wet, you'll be like, I should have went to therapy a long time ago. You know, that's usually what happens. (laughs) I love it. So just go ahead and kind of just try it out and see what happens. Yeah. 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 yeah, And go from there. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Um, Miss Crystal, what keeps you going? Oh my gosh. You know, I am really excited about people being healed. You know, I have been on the other side of being unhealed and not knowing like if my reaction or responses to things was because of what was happening in the moment or what I pulled back from years ago, you know, and I've been there and I've been to a place where I couldn't understand why I was suffering and why I was self-sabotaging and going through all of these cycles and nothing was seen to working. And I felt like I had to be in control, but I was never really in control. Like I've been there, you know, and now I'm on the other side and it feels good over here. Listen, it feels good over here. And to have the opportunity to help people to get to the other side, That is so exciting for me because I understand the power of healing and the fact that I'm healed. So my kids have an opportunity to live a life where they don't have to go to counseling because of me. That excites me too. And the fact that I get to have a healthy relationship with my husband and a long lasting marriage, that excites me too. So that is literally what keeps me going, what what wakes me up every day and what keeps me going through the sessions and the sessions and the sessions. Um, I'm just excited about that. Chow, you about to make me shout up in here. I can't, I can't wait. Do the organ. Side, okay. I'm, I'm still a work in progress. I can't wait to get to the other side. Okay. Cause that, that, it sounds like it's beautiful over there. It's wonderful over here. Yeah, and you know, you become unapologetic about who you are and what you want and you just don't settle anymore, you know, and it's just authentic. It's just, and it feels good, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I think it's, it's so beautiful that you mentioned that, right. Just like making it to the other side and then seeing other people like having that impact, right? That helps Mm -hmm. other people get to the other side. But sometimes, you know, even thinking about the journey and those small kind of celebrations along the way, Mm -hmm. those small, like, sometimes I'll be on the phone with my best friend and I'm like, you know, such and such pissed me off today, but you know what? I'm working on grace. So I didn't say such and such and such, or instead of me saying this, I went and I said this instead. Mm -hmm. And I tried to get a little bit more understanding and I understood Mm -hmm. where she was coming from. And now we good. I'm like, you know what? I'm proud of myself, you know, (laughs) just on that journey. So I can, so I think for me personally, that feels good. Those Mm -hmm. small Mm -hmm. kind of accomplishments along Mm -hmm. the way, like I said, honey, Jesus and my therapist are still working on me, but you know, those small accomplishments along the way feel amazing. So Mm -hmm. I can only imagine, you know, what it feels like to truly feel like you've made it to the other side. And there's always you know, room for improvement, right? You're always on this this continuous learning journey, but that moment where you really feel like, wow, I am healed, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, I have healed from this thing. Like I have healthy relationships. I know how to communicate. You can't provoke me. Listen, (laughs) I am under unoffendable, you know, I'm good. (laughs) I know, I know, I know. So Ms. Crystal, tell us what's next for you. What would you say is next for you? Yeah, well, I just released a workbook on forgiveness because that has been what my healing journey has been. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I wrote a workbook on forgiveness because I had to overcome a lot of things, but I was only able to overcome when I forgave and I had to forgive without an apology or an explanation, you know, because I was stuck there, you know, they had moved on, they were on with, you know, going on with their life, but here I was 
waiting, upset. Because listen, I could hold a grudge with two hands. You know, it was no problem, right? No problem. (laughs) And so, you know, people would always say, you know, you just need to forgive and move on. You need to forgive and move on. Like it's a simple thing, you know, and I am a realist. When I do therapy, I'm real, you know, and forgiveness is not easy, you know, and it takes a lot of work. And so I pretty much put my journey into a workbook and it's a step-by-step guide on what you can do in order to forgive when it comes to, you know, your triggers and adjusting your expectations. Because oftentimes we put expectations on people that they never agreed to. And then when they disappoint us, we become upset because they did something that we expected them not to do, even though they never agreed that they would not do it, you know, but that's in the book. And so... I did that. And so that's pretty amazing. And today is um, National Forgiveness Day. So that's exciting too. (laughs) Yeah. And so then um, in October, I am doing my Healing the Inner Child retreats in Eastern North Carolina, where me and a small group of people go and we heal the emotional wounds that were created during childhood. And it is absolutely amazing and life-changing. And that is what I have coming up. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love it. I was getting ready to talk and I was still on mute. I <laughs> love that. That's that sounds life changing. What <sighs> you said it's it's an event. Is it like a day thing yeah, or a series? It's a or... weekend. It's a oh. weekend, Friday to Sunday. Um, we're in a retreat center in eastern North Carolina where it's farm to table. You can get massages, you see the mountains, you can see the animals, so therapeutic. And we go and it's just me and it's about seven people and either we're addressing the issues with your mom or we address the issues with your dad and for that weekend it's just me and you and we are hammering it out and we are crying and we are talking about the hidden things the secret things that you've never wanted to utter ever before in your life and we deal with those things and by the end of that weekend my goal is that you are healed completely and you never have to turn back And so that is what that weekend is all about. And I'm so excited. It is like the highlight. I wasn't able to do it last year because of COVID, but this year I am doing it and I am excited about it. Let me tell you, that sounds so amazing. I will be laid out on the floor somewhere. (laughs) Number one, I will be laid out, laid out, healing, laid out. And two, Uh I'm not leaving after that. Y'all might be staying for the weekend, but I done moved in. I done moved in. I done packed my bag. It is absolutely amazing. And it's mostly Black people that come. And I love it. I love it because we deserve that. We deserve a space to just let it all out and leave it and never have to pick it up again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. We absolutely do. So now tell us where we can find your workbook, where we can purchase, and then how we can keep up with your journey. Yeah, so you can get the workbook at book.crystalcurry. That's C-U-R-R-I-E dot com. And you can follow me on Instagram at Crystal R. Curry, C-U-R-R-I-E on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Awesome. This was so amazing. So, so, so amazing. I love chatting with you. I've learned so much about mental health and Black people and mental health awareness month for Black, for minorities. I keep minorities, Black people. I'm working on it. (laughs) You know, it's whatever you want to say. Okay. Okay. I feel, I feel, I feel like this is a non-judgmental space, right? Absolutely. It's a safe space. (laughs) Yes. Love it. Well, I will be keeping up with you. I'll be following you, following you on Instagram. And for those of you out there who are listening, once we post this video, I hope that you uh, follow Miss Crystal and keep up with her journey and look into the forgiveness workbook because child, I need to work on that. Um, But yes, Miss Crystal, thank you so much for chatting with me today. This has been awesome. Thank you so much.